Good evening, afternoon, morning, and night, everybody, uh, wherever you happen to be and whenever you happen to be watching this. This is episode 26 of my series, 100 Casts, in which I will be shoutcasting over 100 games of League of Legends sent in to me by fans and friends. If you'd like your replay to be featured on the series, check the description. You can find instructions on how to do that down there. I'll see you at the end of the video. Alrighty, let's get this cast going, then. So, I apologize for the little bit of lag here at the beginning. I'm not entirely sure why that was, but it does even out as we go on. Anyways, um, this particular match is a normals game sent in to me by CW.Jellyfish, who, who is a content creator for Copenhagen Wolves. You should check him out. He's amazingly good at editing videos. The guy is really, really good at his job, so you should check him out Welcome for sure. Anyways, um... Let's get into the match then. Let's get into matchups first. Down in bottom lane, we have a Morgana versus a Blitzcrank. And the reason I don't mention the 80 carries there is because they're both vain. Yes, this was a blind pick normals match, and uh, it's still perfectly fine to cast. It's going to get a little bit confusing as I say the vein tumbles forward and the vein tumbles back as we see Blitzcrank getting a hook onto the purple team's vein, blue team vein. Really coming out ahead in that trade-off there, getting another auto attack. Purple Team Vein is really low on health, and you know, I might just start calling people by usernames here to uh, avoid some of the confusion. So, Dad Jellyfish doing a really good job of harassing there at level 1, forcing the enemy Vein to go back to base. The enemy Vein being Scooby-Doo, by the way, which is a wonderful name. Lots of O's in Scooby-Doo, so I suppose I should pronounce it Scooby-Doo, or something like that. Anyways, in terms of mirror matchups, we also have a mirror matchup coming out of the jungle. There is a Nunu versus a Nunu, though actually, my my bad, the purple team Nunu is a top laner, and the blue team Nunu is a jungler, so at least we won't see them facing off against each other directly in the laning phase, though later on in team fights it's probably going to get really silly looking with those two giant circles of absolute zero going off, probably around the same time, because... Both Nunus want to use their ults in team fight. It's a very good team fight ability. As we see Master Yi, the jungler for Purple Team, starting off at his blue buff, and Nunu starting off at his blue buff as well. Mirroring each other in terms of buff color, but not in terms of position on the map. So Nunu might be able to invade against the enemy Master Yi, as we see uh, the Zed get a little bit of harass there put onto him by the enemy Yasuo, but he seems to be alright coming out of the mid lane. And I'd like to go into the top lane matchup, if I may. It is a Kale versus a Nunu. Now, Kale's going to have the advantage in that lane, I think. Partially because of her range with Righteous Fury, and partially because of the wave push that she has with Righteous Fury. She's going to be able to push in the Nunu early on because Nunu has terrible wave clear. His damage is decent, especially if he builds AP, which looks like he's doing. And his CC is also pretty good. As we see down in bottom lane, though, I'm interrupted by the Blitz getting a really good knockup onto the Morgana. She takes a ton of damage and then flashes away, but she goes down to the hook damage after flashing away. So that's first blood going over to Blitzcrank. As in mid lane, the Yasuo manages to get a kill onto Zed, the Ignite taking him out as he manages to escape out from under the tower after getting that kill for himself. So that's first blood going over to blue team, but a kill going back to purple. So still even on the gold across the board. As down in bottom lane, the purple team Vayne is finding herself in some trouble there. She's forced to burn both summoners. Really nice hooks coming out for Moop here on Blitzcrank, managing to hook the enemy Vayne after getting first blood on the enemy support Morgana. So doing really well there. Uh, playing that Blitzcrank to full, full potential there, landing a lot of really solid hooks. The Nunu jungle for blue team has opted to go for his red buff, ready the enemy's red buff. Nunu is actually a fairly strong counter jungler because he can steal buffs away very effectively with consume. As uh, speaking of the other Nunu up in the top lane, he has done what I did not think he could do and has pushed up onto the Kale. His wave clear may be, uh, may be bleak, but at least he has really good sustain as down in bottom lane, the Vayne gets hooked again, and this time she does not have summoner spells to keep herself alive, and Jellyfish is going to pick up that kill there. Really nice heal there at the end to get himself a double kill. Looked like he might have been going down to that Morgana plus the minion damage. He was quite low on Vayne, but he managed to heal in time, clutch summoner spell there to save his life and he manages to pick up a double kill, putting himself certainly much farther ahead of his counterpart Vayne on the enemy team. 
Zed has roamed up the top lane, gets the slow onto Nunu, but Nunu has Blood Boil running and is too quick for him to do anything but land a bit of harass. At least he gave the Kale some space in which to farm, relieving some of the pressure that this AP Nunu has been putting down over and over onto the enemy Kale up into top lane. Really doing a lot of work with those snowballs. There's another one going out and chunking hard. AP Nunu is really, uh, really annoying to play against. He's kind of fun to play as, I have to say, but he's annoying to play against as another hook lands from the Blitzcrank down in bottom lane, but Vayne, the Vayne for his team, chooses to go to base right as the hook lands, and so he isn't able to finalize that kill. At least he doesn't go down for his efforts, as in mid lane, a duel going on between the Zed and Yasuo. Yasuo managing to block some creep damage with the wind wall, but nothing else there, as Nunu is still just z bullying this Kale. This is just mean. Those uh, free spells, his passive, I forget what it's called, but his passive every fifth auto attack makes his next spell cast entirely free, not not cost any mana at all. Though it does still have a cooldown, so I suppose not entirely free. And he uh, can abuse that in lane to get free harass or free heals off. And uh, the Kale, however, has mana costs and everything she does has no way to avoid having to spend her mana, and so whenever she goes to sustain or to farm at a range, she spends mana, and so she goes, she runs Oom um very, very quickly, whereas the Nunu has essentially infinite sustain so long as he's not bullied away from the minions so that he can keep auto-attacking them. The only downside to that is that he has to keep auto-attacking, so he has to push the lane if he wants to take advantage of his passive effectively. We have a bit of a moment of quiet here, and I'd just like to, uh point out the fact that Jellyfish on Vayne is, uh, I'm interrupted here, Blitzcrank, really, really nice hook onto the Morgana, the Black Shield a little bit too late to save her life, and Mook secures yet another hook and yet another kill going over to the Vayne uh, on that Jellyfish, who is now 3-0 and oh to the enemy Vayne's 0-1, oh and, and I was just about to say, he has a um, Bilgewater Cutlass already, another hook. This guy is just a hook machine. The Condemn not quite landing to stun the enemy vein against the wall, but it doesn't really matter. There's enough damage there with that Bilgewater Cutlass for the yeah, for the blue team vein. Sorry, stumbling over my words here. Don't know quite why, but for the blue team vein to pick up that kill, putting her at four and zero. Oh. Nunu has roamed to the mid lane. You're going to be ganking for Dark Tonga, who goes in on Zed, lands the death mark onto Yasuo. The shuriken doesn't quite hit though, so the pop from death mark doesn't do very much damage. As Yasuo just going to be dashing around and outplaying this gank pretty hard. He goes in with the ulti after his knock up on to Sido Smart on the jungle. Nunu there, and that's Yasuo getting a kill in a two v one scenario. That's not too good for for blue team. They do have the Vayne to rely on, who's 4-0 down in bottom lane, but they have to be careful not to feed the enemy Yasuo because he's one of the few answers that purple team has for this yet, for this fed Vayne here. Since they can't really rely on their Vayne outscaling the enemy Vayne, since that uh, kind of doesn't happen. It's a blind pick, and so both Vayne's are going to scale equally hard as a tower dive from the Yasuo gives him a killing spree there. The Ignite, as well as a Spinny Q after he dashes forward with Sweeping Blade, going to be able to do enough damage to take out the Zed under his tower. That tower not providing enough protection for the Zed to survive. Blitzcrank has roamed up from bottom lane, going to be warding out the Dragon Pit and doing what supports should do, as Vayne's going ham in 1v2, does get hit by the Binding, but Morgana is not level 6 yet, does not have her ult to follow up, and Blitzcrank has shown up, Black Shield comes out perhaps a bit prematurely, and the Vayne flashes and heals, Scooby-Doo flashing and healing just to try and escape that situation after the Blitzcrank shows up in time to save that Jellyfish from a turnaround 2v1 scenario. As up in top lane, the Blood Boiled Kale and Nunu are going after the enemy Nunu. A nice slow lands from the Kale as she's hammering down with those fiery auto attacks. The top lane Nunu forced to flash over the wall away from the jungle Nunu. Master Yi has shown up though, is going in on this Kale. She pops her ulti to survive for a bit longer. She flashes to try and juke out, but the Nunu has shown up, is using Absolute Jet Zero, channels it for a short while before popping it, getting that kill. The second Absolute Zero in this game though is being popped by the jungle Nunu, who now is ghosting to chase after his counterpart from the top lane. Can he get this kill? I apologize for the lag spike there, but Pseudo Smart did in fact manage to pick up that kill. He's quite low now, and I think the Master Yeah, we have with Alpha Strike, he's going to be able to pick up that for himself. And that is a two for two. Oh, sorry, Master Yi lives, so a two for one. 
with the two going to purple team and one going to blue team, as now the kill score on the map is evened out at 6-6. Six to six. Yasuo going in on 2Z and 1v1ing him once more. As down in bottom lane, Blitzcrank is chasing up after the enemy Vayne, who does have a black shield. The hook coming out, but going a little bit to the left. I believe that's the first hook I've seen move mix miss this entire game, so I'm going to be able to uh, give him a little bit of leeway there and say it's it's fine he missed that hook. He's made up for it in the past with some other pretty nice hooks. Yasuo has run down for mid, however, so blue team bot lane is forced to back off. That jellyfish channeling his base to head back home and pick up some more items. Perhaps he can finish his Blade of Ruin King at this point. He does have a 10 CS lead as well as still being 4-0 against the enemy Vayne. So yeah, he can finish off that Blade of Ruin King, whereas Scooby-Doo really only has a Vampiric Scepter and not much else to speak of. So that's quite an advantage for Blue Team down in the bottom lane. And I apologize for the lag spike earlier, or FPS drops, I suppose, earlier. I'm not sure what causes those. Fraps has not been the most cooperative lately, and I'm looking into other recording software, but there's not much out there on the market aside from OBS, which has also been uh, giving me some stuttering issues in terms of frames. So if anyone knows of something that I could use to record perhaps in a bit higher fidelity or without these random and unexplainable frame drops, it would be uh, quite appreciated if you could direct me to where I could get that. Up in the top lane, Nunu, having gone with a 3 Doran's Rain build, as well as some Sorcerer Shoes, is doing quite a bit of damage. He's channeling the ulti now. Kale using her ult, though, to intervene with that Divine Intervention and save her own life, as now Yasuo once more going after Doug Trongo here in the set. He lands the knockup and ults him under tower, dashes away past a minion to get out of tower range in time to be able to save his own life from those revenging tower shots that would have killed him. So he manages to get a kill and come out clean once more. And uh, the Zed is at 0-4, and, and Yasuo is at 5-0. and So that's really going to be the uh, sole hope for Purple Team at this point. Nice wind wall coming out from Yasuo to block that hook from Moop. But he might not be quite enough as the knockup's going to come out from Blitzcrank as well. And Dad Jellyfish showing up here on Vayne. Going to tumble forward into the final hour just to get that AD boost so that uh, he can secure the kill and put himself at 5-0 and as well. Though I suppose it's no longer 5-0 for Yasuo, who's now 5-1, having died right there and given the shutdown gold over to Dad Jellyfish. To be fair, the enemy Vayne has been farming up quite well, but it might not be enough here in this situation, as Vayne does get condemned back onto the wall, Dad Jellyfish that is, does, and it's actually looking like it's going in purple team's favor here, Dad Jellyfish and Mook being a little bit too split, however, not going in their favor for very long as Morgana gets turned on by that jellyfish. Master Edo gonna be going for the tower dive. He's shown up here. The shutdown going over to Vayne. Well, I suppose going over to purple team Vayne, which is certainly going to help him out. The Zed has roamed down from mid lane. Tongo going to be able to pick up that kill with the pop from Deathmark. And that is a kill put on the board for Zed. He's certainly going to be happy with that. He's been uh, bullied out of this lane in mid lane over and over again. So he really needs to get these comeback kills and come back into this game because the enemy Vayne come late game is going to be a threat. That's what Vayne is in the later game, no matter what. So, ah, uh, Kale nearly getting the kill there with Ignite. However, Nunu is able to base in time after the Ignite does not manage to finish him off and doesn't dodge out the tornado from Yasuo's third proc on his Q and dies there in the bush. Yasuo not even giving her the uh, dignity of a face check, just throwing it out there and knowing that it's going to kill her. Picks up another kill for himself. Puts himself at 6 and 1, and he's gone for the static ship rush. He's chasing down Zed here, he's gonna dash towards him, land a Q onto him. Zed flashes over the wall though, and that is a flash burned, I suppose, as Yasuo chases after him. The slow being forced out from Zent here onto that jellyfish down in the bottom lane, as uh, he was chasing forward on Vayne towards that Morgana, but the Morgana has the Frost Queen's claim and was able to dissuade her from chasing any further, but did lose half of her health for that trade. As in mid lane, Yasuo failing to stop the back from Zed, but he's pushed the minions up under the tower now, and he looks like he's roaming into the enemy's jungle towards that blue buff. Might want to interrupt the Nunu taking it here. As we look down at bottom lane, where Blitzcrank lands a nice hook, threading it between the minions and pulling in Scooby-Doo. However, Master Yi has shown up. Morgana goes down. She's very squishy, having rushed a Frost Queen's claim at this point. 
Blitzcrank getting stunned against the wall by the Condemned from the enemy Vein is left all alone by uh, that Jellyfish who tried to dive the enemy Vein under the turret as Yasuo has bit off perhaps a bit more than you can chew in this blue buff invade. There were three members of the enemy team all nearby. Is he going to be able to take out the Kale though? He is! Actually that goes over to Nunu who shows up with a snowball to finish that off. Uh, tries to pop Absolute Zero onto Zed. Nice Zed mechanics, dodging out the Snowball as well with his ulti after using his Shadow to swap out of the Absolute Zero takes absolutely zero damage. <laughs> I'm sorry. From the enemy Nunu, and uh, thus manages to get the kill and get out alive. But it's a Nunu on Nunu chase here. Who will win? Who can blood boil harder? The enemy Nunu in deep enemy territory is going to get executed under the tower there. Nicely done by Anivia. I believe that's the Nunu's name. That's very confusing. I'm going to refer to him as Purple Anu- um, yeah. Purple Nunu because I- oh. That's just bad mannered. He's dancing on the enemy Nunu's corpse. That's- that seems a little bit, uh, a little bit bad mannered to me, but hey. It's his right. He's allowed to dance on the enemy Nunu if he wants to, as we see Yasuo dashing towards onto the ZZ, knowing he can't really escape from the enemy Yasuo, is simply going to give up. However, Yasuo is choosing not to finish off the kill, allowing him to walk away. This game is getting progressively more silly, as Vayne actually tumbles straight into the Dark Binding from Morgana, takes quite a chunk of damage. She has been maxing that first and has some AP from the Frost Queen's claim, and so did chunk out the enemy Vayne on that Jellyfish. Another Dark Binding landing in the tower. Morgana gonna be going under the tower to dive and try and ignite and finish off that kill. She gets exhausted, but still is able to finish off the kill. Does go down to the Vayne, so I would actually say that Vayne came out the better in that scenario because she's gonna scale much harder than a support Morgana will. But at least it's a one-for-one -one trade. Not absolutely terrible. As up in top lane, Master Yi is chasing after Kale. Kale forced to flash to get farther under her tower and away from this Master Yi gank is going to be able to survive. Good for her, though it is a summoner burned. As down in bottom lane, Scooby-Doo on Vayne is going to be going for this turret. It'll be the second turret in the game for Purple Team if she can get it, but Blitzcrank is chasing in. Nice hook landed, pulls her under tower. The ult and the knockup doing a huge burst of damage along with the tower shot, but not quite enough to bring her down, and no one else is around to help out Blitzcrank finish that kill off. As the Kale ult comes out a little bit too early, Oh, actually, I thought that was the enemy Nunu's Absolute Zero. That's very confusing, as the purple team Nunu is now being chased away by Nunu, and Kale does get finished off by Nunu. However, the Kale went down to the Master E, who came in to help out his friendly Nunu. And here's Zed, Vayne, and Yasuo all in a big brawl with one another. The Yasuo, though, was in a 2v1 in that situation, and went down for it. The Zed showing up and getting a kill for himself. Uh, no, no, that actually went over to Vayne, who is 9-2 and two at this point and has a red buff, is wearing a red buff circling around her feet right there, so this could spell some really bad news for the enemy team bottom lane. I believe Morgana just used her Spell Thief's, uh, no, Frost Queen's claim to pick up a CS there, so that, I wouldn't advise it, but it's her decision. She can choose to do it if she wants to. Some nice damage coming out from Vayne onto this Morgana here. Blitzcrank using his ulti to break the black shield and Vayne flashing in for the final auto attack. Nicely done from Blitzcrank there, breaking the black shield with the magic damage from his ult so that he can continue to CC her with his power fist. However, the enemy Vayne has shown up and lands a good condemn onto Blitzcrank into the wall. Blitzcrank out of mana at this point. Might not be able to, to escape from this one. Yeah, Scooby-Doo had finished off his Blade of the Ruin King by now and was able to finish off the Blitzcrank even after he got under his tower. And that's a kill going over to Scooby-Doo on Vayne, who is 2-2 two two now. Has only actually died twice in this game, despite the enemy damage being quite fat. As Master Yi solos the dragon by... I was about to say solos by himself, but that's kind of redundant. He does manage to meditate the absolute zero damage from the enemy Nunu and does not take very much damage there. However, Zed swaps over the wall to take that kill. Can he escape here? Ah, oh, he flashes, but it's not quite quickly enough. And the static shiv burst on that auto attack from Yasuo is going to be able to finish off that kill onto Dark Tongo on Zed. And he goes down, giving another kill over to Yasuo, who's 8-3 and three at this point. However... Jellyfish is doing quite well still on Vayne and is 10 and 2, so those two are really counterpoints to each other in this game. The Yasuo being very well suited for taking out a Vayne, and Vayne being very well suited for taking out in anyone come late game. Just anyone. Doesn't matter who. The Vayne can kill them most likely. So, um, they're going to be the big focal points for each team in this game, I'm thinking. 
Though actually, looking at the team gold up at the top there, it is 32.6k to 26.9k, and it's purple team that has the lead. Mainly because they just took another one. They have the turret lead, 3 to 0. Nice knockup coming out from the Yasuo over there, stopping the Zed in his tracks. Another binding coming in from Morgana, gonna stop him even more in his tracks. He has no tracks at this point. And a Blitz the Blitzcrank's hook was spell shielded. Just so much counter engage from the pairing of that Morgana and the Yasuo there. There were auto attacks blocked by the vein from the wind wall. The spell shield blocked Blitzcrank's hook. I mean, they're still gonna lose the tower here, which kind of sucks. But they're still ahead in terms of global gold, ahead in terms of total gold, and kills. They're ahead in terms of everything that one can be ahead in, even in terms of dragons. They've got the only dragon in this game, so they don't mind losing that one turret. And they managed to fend off three or four engage attempts from the enemy team there, just the Yasuo and the Morgana alone. That was very well played by that duo. Master Yi popping Highlander, chasing after the enemy team. His team might be a little bit too far behind for him to have any support, though. Does the Morgana go down? She does go down to the death mark as Tongo swaps back to his shadow. He's being chased out by the Zed as the Morgana, as, sorry, as the Master Yi gets a double kill for himself. The Bane for Blue Team tried to come up big there, but got focused by the Master Yi after he got that double kill. He does, he does go down after picking up the Bane. That is a shutdown going over to Mook on the Blitzcrank there, but he is in a dire spot here, being chased out by the enemy Yasuo, who has a red buff. He chooses to stand next to the wolf camp and spam laugh, rather than continue to try to escape. And that's an ace for Purple Team. And a really, uh, turnaround set of events here for, from, uh, Purple Team. They're going to be getting an ace, have an 8,000 gold lead on the board, and a 4-1 to one lead in terms of turrets. So they've, uh, they've really pulled back into this game. They're doing quite well for themselves right now. Anyways, we have a bit of a lull in the action, so I'd like to look at some of the builds and uh, talk about those, if I may. And uh, what I'd like to look at first is the Morgana's build. I don't have very much to say about it. Um, I would like to retain my professional integrity and not say anything damning about the build. I will simply say that it is interesting. A Phage and a Magi Soul Stealer is not the choice I would have gone with, but it could certainly work out for her. She could do wonderful things with those items. Moving on to some other builds, we see that Nunu has opted for a Double Rod of Ages build. Now that, that is, that is very, very interesting. I really actually like that choice because it gives him a lot of tankiness as well as some damage as we see Morgana getting hooked by the Blitzcrank. The speed buff popped by the Blitzcrank for the rest of his team allows him to catch back up to her after she tries to escape and she does go down to the vein. Kale, Nunu, Master Yi, and Nunu in the duel here up in the top lane. Master Yi going to be getting that kill onto Kale. As in the middle lane, the Zed is ulting onto Yasuo and gets the shutdown gold from that kill, actually. The Blitzcrank and Bane having helped him out, but this might be a bit of a problem for Blue Team if they can't kite the Master Yi, which they can. He tries to dive them under the tower, but he gets knocked up by the Blitzcrank. Can't be slowed, but can be power fisted, and he's going to go down as the purple team Nunu now being chased out by Dark Tongo on Zed. Is he gonna be able to catch up? The Shuriken not quite reaching far enough, and then he turns around to dodge the hook from Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank goes down to a snowball and an auto attack, but thankfully the purple team Nunu does die right thereafter, giving a kill up to Zed, who's coming back into this game at five and six. Anyways, I was talking about Nunu's build, and actually I'd like to take a look at it again because he's gone with another catalyst. Now, there's only one item that that builds into now, Rod of Ages, so he's looking to stack Rod of Ages. If this game goes really far into the late game, that wouldn't actually be a terrible pickup for him, since he's going to be stacking a ton of health, AP, and um, mana. Kale in a bit of trouble trying to duel the enemy's support, does not have the damage to take her out, actually. So Morgana gets some stacks on her Magi's, but then immediately loses some of them as she goes down to Zed right thereafter. She did take a good amount of damage from the Kale in that duel. Nicely dodged by Zed, predicting where the uh, Yasuo would be throwing out his tornado, and he goes in onto a shadow immediately to dodge it. Then jumps in with his ulti and manages to get that kill, giving it over to Jellyfish on Vayne. She is now, or he is now at 12 and 4, has a Yumu's and a Blade of the Rune King. I like the Yumu's build on Vayne. It's gotten some, it's gained some traction recently. Um, and I really rather like it. It makes her 
much more of a strong duelist in a 1v1 situation. That extra attack speed and movement speed really, really powerful for that one time that you need to have it to win the fight. And so it's really just focusing on Vayne's strength. She's very, very good at dueling, so that item makes you even more powerful in a duel. So build on your strengths. I mean, you can also go with this with the strategy of covering your weaknesses, but building on your strengths is certainly viable as well. Nunu and Zed having an intense duel here. They're uh, choosing not to fight each other at all. However, the rest of Purple Team is showing up to ruin their little picnic. And uh, Zed now running away through the enemy jungle, going to flash over the wall into the empty red pit, being chased by Yasuo, Morgana, Nunu, and, well, actually not Master Yi anymore. Master Yi has found Blitzcrank. He's going to be chasing after him. Blitzcrank forced to flash away. Master Yi, though, still hadn't popped Highlander and does so now. He uses Blade of the Ruin King to get another additional speed buff. Can't be slowed, Blitzcrank. The exhaust not doing anything. Well, it did, did slow his damage, actually. It might have saved Blitzcrank's life. Did Zed not go down? Zed did not go down. He managed to escape somehow from that uh, three-man chase in the top of the enemy's jungle. So we'll never know quite how because Blitzcrank actually got the kill onto Master Yi. This game is getting... I said earlier that it's getting increasingly silly. Well, it's getting more and more increasingly silly. I don't know what half of the things that are happening on the screen are anymore, but they are wonderful things and I like that they are continuing to happen. And uh, the Morgana getting caught out by Nunu and Zed there. It goes down, does quite a bit of damage with her ulti right before she does so. Yasuo might be able to take advantage of that damage. He is, in fact, able to do so, and he picks himself up a double kill against the Nunu and the Zed here, taking advantage of the damage that Morgana did before going down, as well as having quite a bit of damage himself. Blitzcrank here um, near the Yasuo. Maybe goes to throw out the hook, but Yasuo has wind wall, so neither one of them are going to do anything. They're just going to laugh at each other and then walk away. Spamming emotes is the best way to win at this game, kids. Uh, you heard it here first. Spam emotes win game. As uh, Blitzcrank is using the strange but effective strategy of running around in circles. Yes, it's, it's meant to confuse and intimidate the opponent rather than actually kill them or push them out of lane or do anything of real use, you instead intimidate them and perhaps confuse. While Purple Team is going for a Baron, they have a Nunu to do this Baron with as well as a Master Yi, so that's a lot of DPS going to be bringing this down very quickly. Purple Team has the AP Nunu on their team, so I'm going to call them... Actually, Blue Team's Nunu is going for an AP build as well. I was going to call them Wizard Nunu and Support Nunu, but... The uh, blue team is choosing to go for a wizard new build as well, so I can only call them blue and purple. I'm sorry for the confusion if there is any. While we see Sido Smart going after Kenji here on the Master Yi, they did manage to get the Baron buff, but Blitzcrank is going to show up and toss out a hook and finish off that kill onto Master Yi, so that's only four members of Purple Team now wearing the Baron buff. However, four members is still more than the amount of members that blue team has wearing it. And it looks like Sido Smart might be going down. He does get ulted by the Kale, so he's able to survive a little bit longer. However, Yasuo comes back in with the last breath. Gonna be getting himself a double kill onto Kale and Nunu. Still chasing out the enemy team here. He's quite low, though. This might be dangerous for him. Gets knocked up by Blitzcrank. No, it is not dangerous for him. It's a triple kill, and Morgana takes the fourth. As now Vayne is in trouble, tumbles into final hour, and pops Yunu. Does a lot of damage to this Morgana. She managed to take him down. Now being chased down by Yasuo and Nunu. The Nunu all alone. Yasuo having... Got, yeah, Yasuo having fallen behind, but Nunu has enough health with those stacked up rods of ages to be able to survive long enough to get the ace for himself. Throwing out a final snowball there, getting the kill onto Vayne. And that is another ace for Purple Team after they pick up a Baron. So Purple Team really has a commanding lead right now in this game. They really just need to push and take some turrets though, since while they do have a turret lead, they still only have four turrets here at nearly 30 minutes into the game, so it would be a good idea for them to go for some of those turrets and try and get some more map control under their belt while they have this advantage on the board in terms of man advantage and in terms of the Baron buff that nearly all of them are wearing. I'm sorry if you just heard a little, uh, plink sound effect from, I believe that's Steam. That was on my end. I had someone message me while I while recording this and so you don't have someone talking to you that's me you don't have friends i have friends now you probably have friends you probably do 
Anyways, Nunu going after the turret here, trying to get some of that map control I was talking about earlier. Eats a minion to survive a few of the tower shots and has a ton of health from those rods of ages that he's been building there. And so is able to tank up the tower long enough that with Blood Boil he can take it down and put a 5-2 to two turret advantage for Purple Team here in the map. Nice Dark Binding hitting from the Morgana, who has completed her Trinity Force, by the way, is going in for a hybrid Morgana support damage build. Uh, gets ulted by Dark Tongo, though, on Zed and goes down. The build not really working out well enough to 1v3 under the enemy tower. I don't think it's quite that strong. As Master Yi and Nunu, though, have taken out an inhibitor turret and are still pushing in onto this inhibitor. The Blood Boil from Purple Nunu doing a lot to take down that inhibitor. However, Master Yi then goes down to the absolute zero from Blue Team Nunu. Purple Team Nunu in trouble, gonna be taken out by Dad Jellyfish on Vayne, who shows up for the last few auto attacks to bring him down. The inhibitor did go down, though, and that's two kills for an inhibitor. I'd have to say that's worth it for Purple Team. Yasuo now pushing up with Vayne. They do both have Baron buff, but it is a 2v5 situation here. They probably don't want to keep going for this. Yasuo does want to keep going for this, though. Throws out the Wind Wolf, dashes forward, deals some good damage to Kale. Going to be walking away from the rest of the team, though, as they show up. Can Blitzcrank land a good hook across the wall here? No, he does not go for it. Probably didn't know that Yasuo was there. The ulti coming in from Yasuo lands a knockup onto Sido Smart, but Sido Smart is too tanky to go down that quickly. And the rest of the enemy team has shown up here. That is a shutdown going over to Tongo. He picks that one up and gets a red buff for himself as well. Certainly going to be happy grabbing that. Ah, oh, sorry about my voice. I think it's starting to go here. So much silly action happening all across the board. This game has just started to uh, spin out of control. And I know why. I know why, folks. It's because Nunu is now getting his fourth Rod of Ages. Hold the phone. Is this the Rod of Ages only build coming out from Nunu? Is he eventually going to sell those boots and get a sixth Rod of Ages? Sell the Doran's Ring and get a fifth one? We might get to find out if this game goes on long enough. <laughs> oh god. Looks like Morgana is choosing to go with a bit more of a conventional item for her next pickup. Has a Seeker's Arm Guard looking to go for that, um, what is it called? Zonia's Hourglass. I don't know how I momentarily forgot the name of that item. Blitzcrank looking to invade on the enemy jungle. Finds Nunu, but Nunu just eats one of those minions and runs away. Scooby-Doo and that Jellyfish in a one-on-one -on -one vein duel here. Jellyfish gets the shutdown gold. He had the one-on-one -on -one build, whereas the enemy vein had the more teamfight-oriented build with the Phantom Dancer rather than the Yunu's Ghost Blade. So he's able to win the one-on-one -on -one duel there. As Zed, speaking of one-on-one -on -one duels, is going after Morgana. She tries to Black Shield, but that is physical damage that Zed deals, and now he's on a killing spree, taking her out. I really apologize for these frame drops. If you guys can see them, they're not just on my end. I really hope they're just on my end. Because this would uh, ruin all of this wonderful footage if uh, there were this many frame drops. As Yasuo now getting knocked back by the enemy vein, throws up the wind wall to block some of the auto attacks. He's in a three-on-one situation, but he's holding his own here. I take it back. The absolute zero pops. He takes a lot of damage. And Jellyfish on vein is on a killing spree now. As we see Purple Team Nunu going to try and solo this tower again like he did earlier on, but this tower has a lot more health than the other one did, so he thinks better of it. He's lost about a third of his health to the tower, and Blitzcrank is chasing after him, lands the slow from Frozen Gauntlet as well as the knockup from Power Fist. And we see the absolute zero coming out from Purple Team Nunu as Master Yi pops Highlander and charges in, trying to go for Sido Smart, but Sido Smart manages to escape, and Dark Tongo picks up the Rampage kill on Master Yi. Now he's chasing after the purple team. Nunu gets slowed by a Ice Blast, or Snowball, or whatever it's called. As uh, now we see Sido Smart going in to the bush to face check it. The purple team, Nunu, just gave up and started trying to base right next to a bunch of enemies. Tongo might be in a bit of trouble. Scooby-Doo chasing after him on the vein. Goes into final hour, tumbles forward. Sido Smart now taken out by a quick two auto attacks. And then the next three auto attacks all land onto Zed and give Scooby-Doo a double kill. Whew. A lot of action down in bottom lane, but I think it ends up with two members dying on each team, so it's an even trade all in all. As we see Morgana now going to clear the small minions out of the red buff camp, but not the large red buff. Just the small minions, that's all she wanted. That's 16 gold from those two. Um, this Morgana has been making me quizzical this whole game. Though perhaps she knows something I do not, as now Jellyfish is in a duel with the enemy Yasuo, doing a lot of damage, has tons of movement speed from the final hour, as well as the Yumu's Ghost Blade and the Fuhrer Boots. So really just going for a lot of movement speed in that build. 
has managed to get the kill. He's on a rampage now. Scooby-Doo might be in a bit of trouble. Lands a nice condemn onto Moop. The hook not quite missing, just out of range. And so Scooby-Doo manages to escape back into his jungle just in time, too, because more members of Blue Team were showing up to close around him, and he would have been very much dead if he had been hit by that hook or had not landed that condemn in time. Baron is back up. Nunu and Master Yi are back at Baron Pit, and like clockwork, this Baron is starting to go down. It's already at a third health. Those consumes and the quick auto attacks from a Blood Boiled Master Yi doing quite a bit to bring it down. However, Blue Team has managed to show up in time, and they are starting a fight here. The Blue Team Nunu is going to be ulting there. He uh, does not manage to get any kills with the absolute zero, though. Zed goes in, Dark Tongo picking up that kill onto Nunu. He then goes down, though, to the enemy Morgana that. Trinity Force doing quite a bit of damage on the auto attacks. However, Jellyfish is unstoppable, chasing after Morgana here now. Gets bound, but uses Quicksilver Sash to break out of the Dark Binding and picks himself up a double kill. And now Baron might be going over to Blue Team. They sweep the pit, but they don't seem to want to start it. The Yasuo and Vayne are still up on the enemy Purple Team, and they don't want to risk starting a Baron off with them still alive while they don't have their Nunu to smite and consume to secure it. Payton coming out of the bush, getting a little bit close to the enemy team there. Might have gotten hooked by the Blitzcrank if she wasn't careful. The hook go does go out, but does not land. Yes, we're throwing up a nice window to watch a lot of attacks. Now going in onto Vayne, lands the knockup and the ulti, getting the shutdown, and then the kill on his tail right thereafter. No assist from his friendly Vayne on friendly Scooby-Doo on Vayne, so does not need any help to take out the enemy team members. Goes into a 1v3 and picks up two kills, gets pulled under the turret by Blitzcrank, does a lot of damage to Blitzcrank in return now. Nunu in a 1v1 does land the exhaust onto Yasuo. Gets knocked up though, and Yasuo with that lifesteal is able to keep himself alive just outside of turret range long enough to get the kill as Dark Tongo takes out the enemy Vayne. Double kill for coming out from Yasuo. He's deep in enemy territory here. Zed trying to chase him out, takes a bunch of damage as he dashes through him. Zed swaps to his shadow, misses the shuriken though. Still has more health than him though, gonna be life stealing with Ravenous Hydra on this minion wave. The wind wall coming out to block any shurikens as Zed tries to walk through and use his spin to do some damage, but the Yasuo just does too much damage, and that is another ace for Purple Team. Ooh, they're going back to this Baron here. Master Yi and Nunu, the dynamic duo going after Baron. That blood boiling consume really doing a lot to melt it down. It's already at half health, as Yasuo is going to be counter jungling the enemy team, taking the blue buff. Doesn't really do very much for him, but hey, at least they aren't going to be getting it. Vayne trying to chase after Morgana, who's going after the tower here. Uh, she does get slowed up by the Frost Queen's claim, but she's able to cleanse, well, Quicksilver Sash the Binding. Gets stunned up by the ulti, but Kale is around to help her survive. Is the Ignite going to be enough? The ult coming out from Kale going to be denying that kill to the dead Morgana. And so that is the story of how Kale saved Vayne's life. Whew. The fourth Rod of Ages is complete. Nunu is now in four Rod of Ages mode. Can he complete a fifth? As we see Kale getting leapt on by the Nunu and, Ka Nunu and Master Yi, who are done with Baron and decide they want to take out the Kale next. They bring her down as the Master Yi and Nunu are going after this tower without any minions. The double absolute zero comes out. The blue team Nunu getting himself a kill onto the enemy team Nunu under the tower there. And then getting a double kill as Master Yi also gets a double kill. And that is a two for two exchange down in the bottom of the map. Purple team picking up two and blue team picking up two. And the turret does not go down. Yasuo now being chased out by Dark Tongo and Dad Jellyfish. Dark Tongo choosing to go in with the Death Mark. Deals a bunch of damage, but doesn't want to keep following up as Vayne was a bit too far behind for him to safely go after that. And Yasuo is able to lifesteal, regenerate with Baron, and he has his shield passive as well, so he really didn't take very much damage, and that Zed's ult kind of wasted there. Guys down in bottom lane, a turret goes down for Purple Team. They now have a 7-2 lead in turrets, and more than a 10,000 gold lead on the board. This is starting to look grim for Blue Team. I mean, they do have the Vayne, but so does the enemy team. So they're both going to be scaling quite well into the late game as far as AD carries go. And the enemy Nunu has built another catalyst. Are we going to see the fifth Rod of Ages this game? Folks, I think we're going to see it. I would love to see that. Zed taking a lot of damage from Yasuo. He dashes under tra tower to keep chasing after him. Zed, nice flash to dodge a bit of the damage, but Yasuo just has too much. Another auto attack going to take him out. As he goes back in onto Kale with the knockup and the ulti. Brings her down as well. That's a double kill for Yasuo. 
It's going quite low, but he manages to escape. Teleport now coming in from the purple team, Nunu. The double absolute zero coming out once more. Manages to charge it fully, but Pseudo Smart is incredibly tanky. He's picked up a lot of ages for himself as well as a bunch of health and some of his other items. However, Yasuo is back, and Yasuo is legendary. Now, Master Yi with Highlander running is chasing after Pseudo Smart. Going to take out that kill under tower. Chasing Moop all the way back to the base past the Nexus turrets. Zent trying to take out this dragon. Can he do it? Can't, no, he goes down to the dragon. Oh, no. Morgana, why? It's almost as if the Trinity Force Morgana build isn't all that great. No, no, it's, it's next level. It's new meta, man. But anyways, looks like this might be Purple Team's game here as they're clearing out the minions next to these Nexus turrets. One of the Nexus turrets is already down, and there goes the second one. Yes, we're going in on the alt onto Moop there, but I think the point is Moop, as now this Nexus is going to go down. Scooby-Doo on Vayne picking that up, and that is GG, friends. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, consider subscribing. Uh, if you want your replay to be featured in the channel, check the description. You can figure out how to do that down there. You know what else is going to be in the description? A link to some of the stuff that um, the person who sent me in this replay, CW Dat Jellyfish, made. He works for the Copenhagen Wolves and is a really cool guy, so you should check out some of his stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good one. See you tomorrow.